Yo dudes and dudettes, your friendly neighborhood Jack's Blade here. And I've been re-watching Digimon seasons one to three with a friend who's never seen it. And something that really stuck out to me on the rewatch was how well done the power consistency was just because of their forms. For those who don't know, here's a quick rundown on Digilore. They are creatures born from Digi-Eggs as babies and then they Digivolve to more advanced stages and then go from in training mode to rookie, to champion, to ultimate, to mega levels. And then there's armor Digivolving and DNA Digivolving and other many forms. Hey, 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 don't click off the video. Stay with me, please. I'm leading this somewhere. So in training Digimon technically would be like a person level threat. I mean, like if we watch Digimon the movie, you see like they kind of suffocated Kari and, you know, Ty as a kid. But like, you know, it's it, you'd have to be like really, really weak to get taken out by in training Digimon. But like that's what they would technically be. Like think of the killer tomato, something like that. And then there are rookie level Digimon. And these are a person to small group threat. Like they can F you up. Like it doesn't matter. They could F you up. Then there are champion Digimon. And these are Digimon that are city to small nation level threats. And then there are ultimate Digimon, which are large nation to minor world level threats. And then there are mega Digimon. And these are planetary and on level threats, depending on how strong they become. And how strong they are may vary. For example, Anjumon is a, only a champion Digimon, but he can throw hands with some ultimates. But usually it's always around the same with like certain Digimon. So when you watch them fight a good majority of the time, you already get a vibe of how well they are going to do against an opponent. If a champion fights an ultimate, they might be able to hold them off or damage them a little, but most of the fight, they're going to be in for a rough challenge. And if a champion fights a mega level Digimon, you know more than likely they ass about to get dog walk severely. Also, it follows the simple yet effective power up rules where they can jump into a stronger form, but it requires stamina and endurance. And so what happens a lot of the time is many of them fall prey to falling back to their rookie forms because Digimon have to eat and get a certain amount of energy and then they become stronger from the various battles they have and then they can stay in their forms longer as they progress and stuff like that. And for the most part, it stays along those lines pretty consistently for the first three seasons at least. And the reason I bring this up is because the older I get, the more I appreciate power our consistency in a show rather than just look at this amazing thing that will give you a high pie just don't question it because so many times i watch or read something and i'm like if you could do all along why was even an issue for you it seems in a lot of series from comic books anime manga movies and even certain cartoons that they have their characters do things just to look insanely powerful but later on they negate that strength and power shown without a true decent explanation and it pretty much becomes plot induced slash writer induced stupidity which we will talk about further in depth later on in this video but those always unintentionally take me out of the story i'm looking at these days now i will say there are certain times where powers don't need to be consistent religiously for example the only times this never really bothers me are in shows where it's intended to be comedic, like they're using Toon Force, aka cartoon logic. An example of this is when I rewatch the OG classic Powerpuff Girls. Not the new one, it's an abomination. But their powers fluctuate all the time in the original show. From insanely immeasurable time traveling speed, deity level strength, and just a ton of random overpowered busted abilities to getting stuck on flypaper in an episode or not being able to tank hits or punch through certain objects they showed they could effortlessly do before. But it never bothered me because I know I'm not meant to take this show seriously. And it's making me laugh my ass off because of the comedy. Again, 90s Powerpuff Girls holds up tremendously, but that happens with most Toon Force style characters like Ed, Ed, and Eddie and their varying degrees of strength for certain characters, you know, like Ed, Rolf, or the Kanker Sisters. Or watching classic Looney Tunes or Animaniacs or Amazing World of Gumball. By the way, Nicole Waters and solos your entire verse casually, not even a contest. <laughs> okay, I have to make this really quick because I just read chapters 1044 and 1045 of One Piece recently, and I have to add this in. So if you don't want any spoilers for One Piece at all, skip to this timestamp right here. Skip to this timestamp, and then that will just like get you back to the normal video. But like, I have to talk about this. I really, really have to because it goes super well with this. So five, four, three, two, one. Gotcha. All right, so Luffy has basically very light Toon Force now, or basically full-blown Toon Force. I don't know how, because he's affecting the environment with his rubber powers because they found out his Gomu Gomu no Mi is actually this uh, Hita Hita no Mi uh, Nika version, which basically means it's like a human version of the Devil Fruit or something like that. Like, it's it's a version of the Devil Fruit which Joy Boy has, who's this character who has, like, basically a Toon Force powers, and I, that, that's just a video for another day, but, like, I just want to talk about the power. The power that Luffy has is very light Toon Force with how he's working, and I love it. I 
I love it because it's so goofy and it fits Luffy. Uh, that works so well. But like, the whole thing with Luffy in One Piece is like, we've always looked at One Piece like, ah oh, man, the art style is like very like, you know, exaggerated. It's very goofy. And so he has this new power for Gear 5, which is basically just turning him into like an Ed and Eddie character with all the sound effects and stuff like that. I just, I love this. I love this so much because Toon Force is like, honestly, my favorite powers I was just talking about. But it's just like so wacky and people were like, oh my god, it doesn't look as bad as this. It's not supposed to look bad as. It's supposed to be a freaking rubber hose cartoon because it's so funny. As a kid, I always thought rubber abilities were just like sort of lame. Like I never thought they were like cool or something like that. I guess Mr. Fantastic, he just ruined everything like that. But then like, you know, as an adult or just when I got older, I just saw how epic it is because like Luffy uses his rubber in so many different ways. Freaking uh, like, you know, uh, Elastigirl Girl uses her for all the rise of you know what I mean, <laughs> and then like you know there are all these other characters who like use like stretchier rubber powers, and it's just like okay wow it actually can be really dope. But Luffy is like one of the ones that just made me go wow that is so cool, and the fact he has like this very light tune force, it's not one of those situations that just feels out of character. It feels like it fits because One Piece has always been so goofy, and Luffy would be the perfect one because he's a freaking rubber hose character just whooping ass. And I'm very curious how they're gonna go forth with it, but I had to talk about it. I love Gear 5 and people saying like it looks too goofy it's not supposed to be like it's, it's silly it's supposed to be silly like it goes along with what I'm saying but anyways back to the video just want to add that in there but yeah Gear 5 is hype Gear 5 is freaking hype and how Bugs Bunny and Popeye's Toon Force can be some of the most OP stuff you've ever seen in any media its primary intention is just to make you laugh so of course I'm not gonna take their powers super killjoy seriously that'd be sad like some people get so angry about that and I'm just like why do you have to be mad but in shows where the stakes become higher and the power creep must keep growing to escalate the tension, I think having that consistency helps so much once your hype high fades. Because hype highs can shoot you up to cloud nine, and then when you come down from it, you can be thinking of it like, wait, couldn't they do this here then? Like, let's talk about one of the most influential and infamous series where it becomes mega noticeable with this, Dragon Ball. Now, Dragon Ball started off as a gag comedy martial arts manga. I mean, we see Goku ride his power pull up to the moon, bet Chi Chi's ass is jealous, and his breaking manga panels with his hits. Yeah, bam. And it evolved into the epic it is today. But when you go back and look at certain things they did in OG Dragon Ball and compare it to stuff that goes on in Z, GT, and Super, there's a lot of moments where it's like, wait, couldn't you have done this here then? Cause you did this when you were a kid. For example, their speed and durability was already insane by the time of the 21st tournament in the original Dragon Ball. Goku tanks bullets, rockets, and massive explosions off guard numerous times, and that is practically at the start of the series. And nowadays, they are billions upon trillions of times stronger, faster, and more durable than their younger selves just in their base forms, but stupid inconsistencies like this happen all the time. While Toriyama is a legit god mangaka and a legend, and so many popular series today would not exist without his creation, not even joking, look up manga creators you love talking about Dragon Ball, he is a very forgetful, make it up as you go type of writer, and it shows numerous times when you revisit the series. Seriously, there are points when I feel like him and this gal would get along swimmingly. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Which can be fine, because everyone has their own style, but it does make certain things really inconsistent because of how overpowered you already made your characters. So when you backtrack to certain things, it becomes more noticeable. And many people call out, that shouldn't even be an issue after we saw them do this way back then. And the fact Dragon Ball has Toy, Toriyama, and Toyotaro, Triple T's, all adding stuff can affect certain things. But a big victim of these type of situations are certain comic book characters. Now the thing with comics is they sometimes get to a point where the characters are so strong in hacks, it feels like when you were on the playground with your friends at recess and one of your friends just keeps making up a bunch of asinine silly power abilities so that they can't lose. I have the power to have all the powers I want. That doesn't count, fat ass! Yeah, that's it, Carmen, you don't get to have any powers. Meh. And the thing is, comics do this all the time because there are so many different writers. But the problem with that becomes on how casually they can make characters do certain things. For example, let's take The Flash. I love The Flash. I love Wally West. He's so freaking dope and has a ton of phenomenal comics I cannot recommend enough. But again, when I'm reading certain issues of his stuff, I'm like, he can solve practically every problem instantly if he chose to. And it's just from his now casual abilities. Seriously, if you don't believe me, go look up what the Flash can do casually. It is insane. Like, go look up a respect thread. Like, he is busted beyond belief casually. 
And it can take me out of the story at times because the only way they can justify him not doing certain things is because of plot-induced slash writer-induced stupidity. Something the CW show suffers from astronomically. Honestly, there are so many instances where they establish he can basically statue everyone in the room with his speed, but then certain criminals give him issues? Like, the fuck? Make it make sense. And I may say something controversial here, but I'm just gonna get it out there. If you have to include plot-induced slash writer-induced stupidity for a character that was made too powerful to nerf them from things they were made to do casually in their series, that is not good writing. Okay, I'm sorry, it's just not good writing. Now, of course, you don't wanna go pick up a Flash comic and it ends in like one page, like I get that. But if you have to do this thing where this character has practically no limitations with their speed, you gotta find other ways to make them engaging or give them some type of limitation. Love or hate the show, but My Hero Academia did this pretty well with their superhero abilities called quirks, where every quirk has the potential to be insanely powerful, but they have their drawbacks if spammed too frequently. Now they have had their ups and downs with that over the course of the series, but overall, it's a cool thing to let us know, oh, if they keep doing this, their body is gonna be fucked up afterwards. And it amps the tension of the scene. Or have them be that insanely powerful and show their day-to-day -day life with how they handle it. Like for example, Superman or One Punch Man Saitama. Some people call Superman boring, but all I gotta say is remember the, I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard speech from Clark. I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard, always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone, never allowing myself to lose control, even for a moment or someone could die. All right, if you actually read a Superman story, you know it's not about him being like, you know, One Punch Man and all that stuff going through. It's about him like, you know, trying to hold himself back because he knows how powerful he is and it's actually really well done. And then let's talk about Saitama, the One Punch Man. I'm not gonna get into the whole gag versus serious powers debate, but majority of the time his power is either used for comedy or cathartic hype because we've seen like the heroes fighting these creatures that are just like completely bodying them and we know Saitama's just gonna one shot all of them when he appears. So like it gives you that like, oh yeah, yeah finally, they're gonna like fucking regret it. It's like when Goku showed up in like the dynamic saga and he like owned the Ginyu Force. It's just that sort of thing of like seeing someone so mega busted show up and like you just know how it's gonna go. Did dad win? Yeah, one punch. One punch! But that's how his powers are typically used whenever he is shown. And then when he is alone, it is shown that his powers make him feel very alienated and give him depression. Cause all he wants is a solid fight. And that works super well. Funny enough, talking about DC, the new 52 comic books wanted to make the powers consistent all through the board in their issues, but many of the writers and artists complained that it was limiting their creative freedom and got upset at the concept. And if you want to have multiple universes where powers can vary, I can dig that a ton, hence why I love the cartoons for certain superheroes. A solid example of this is Superman the Animated Series. It's practically the quintessential Superman show. And I guarantee you, if you ever in your life thought Superman was boring or trash, watch this show and you will change that tone. I've seen this happen now with like six to eight different people I knew who hated Superman, but watched it. I think it's all on like HBO Max right now. And then they grew to love him as a character because of that show. But this show did nerf and weaken Superman immensely compared to his comic counterpart for reasons, as I mentioned earlier. They didn't want him to be too OP because they thought that would make him less relatable and figured, oh, he can just solve every problem like instantaneously. They also did this with characters in, you know, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, who are much weaker than their comic counterparts, but became more relatable as such. And this made the episodes fill you with tension of how they were gonna get past what was going on, while some people would be insanely upset at how weak they were comparatively, but they did show the characters grow in power as the series progressed. In my humble opinion, I feel like if you want to give your characters mega overpowered abilities that can solve any and everything, find some form of limitation so that they cannot do it whenever, or do it at the very, very end of the series, Gurren Lagan, Madoka Magica, Sailor Moon style. That way it's like the series is over, characters bust as fuck, and life is lived happily ever after for them, or you know, whatever, like depending on the series. Because I found there's such a thing as spectacle fatigue where it becomes too overpowered to be impressive and now it just comes off as silly. You wanna learn more about that? Watch this video I did back in 2016 on like what it means to be like too over P where it's just silly. 
And if you do have your character become like this mega overpowered thing and you do this thing where you now make them go back and fight these street level criminals or anything like that, but there's no indication they can't end the fight effortlessly, it becomes an inconsistent mess in my eyes. But that is why I love power consistency in shows these days over inconsistent, whatever works, hype brain moments with the plot. But now you watching to the end. If you made it to the end, I want you to type nerf this. It lets me know who stayed all the way to the end and tell me what series or character do you think was too inconsistent with its OP abilities and what series is your personal favorite with power consistency? Let's get discussion going down below. I really love having these talks with y'all and I love learning what my audience is into because I can even find some new things to check out. Some of my personal favorites are like various sports anime or, you know, One Piece is pretty damn good at it. And then like, you know, Yu Yu Hakusho, Mob Psycho 101, Hunter Hunter, you know, stuff like that. I'm Those are like some of my favorites I think had like pretty decent or really well done, like, you know, power consistency and like they come to my mind. But I'm curious, what are y'all's thoughts? Also, just to give y'all an update, I'm working on a mega Spider-Man video like I did with my TMNT one last year. It's going to be super big, super like busted. I'm probably going to have it out later this year. So be sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe so you do not miss it. And also my new workout program, Hybrid Theory, which is going to be a combination of weight training and calisthenics training with follow along like DVDs that you can like choose your adventure with. I'm super excited to release it. We'll be releasing very, very soon. So be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jacksblade so you can see it like when it drops initially. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing this talk. And remember, like I always say, keep calm, booyah on, and don't forget, moment tie. Peace out. And for my $5 patron shoutouts for the month of April, AX13, Charles Dooley, Daquan Allison, Damian the Human, Frank Barone, Hunter Bursch, Isaac Carrera, John Paul Meyer, Callus Wing, Light Rapid, Rex Ashcraft, Samuel, and Tack, thank you for your ad support. All of you are super, just saying.